Hello, this is Bradley Kermer from the Math Department at BYU-Idaho, and these videos are covering Lesson 5, which is dealing with the normal distribution. And so here are the out here's the outline for the videos. First, I'll talk about the density curve, followed up by the 68, 99.7 rule. Then we'll deal with z-scores. Then in number 4, we'll convert z-scores to probability. Then 5, it'll be percentiles for normal distribution. And then 6, qq-plot, and qq-plots are used to assess normality. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about a density curve. So there's two rules when it comes to a density curve that you should know. And here's an example of a density curve. This is a normal distribution. This is a type of density curve. So first of all, the total area under this whole this curve and above the horizontal line is equal to 1. And then the second rule is that the density curve always lies on or above the horizontal axis. Now, ironically, with a normal distribution, even though it looks like the, the curve falls on the line, it never really does, never really touches the line. But it always either lies, but basically density curve always lies above or or on or lies on or above the horizontal axis. Okay? So now let's talk about the 6895-99.7 rule. Okay? So the 6895-99.7 rule is dealing with the normal distribution is that approximately 68% of all data fall within one standard deviation from the mean. Nine, approximately 95% fall within two standard deviations from the mean, and approximately 99.7% of all the data fall within three standard deviations from the mean. So what we can do is, is that we can say, okay, if we take the mean, and then add and subtract the number of standard deviations, either one, two, and three, times the standard deviation, we can get a lower value and upper value. We can say that 95% of the, the data fall between a lower value and the upper value. Now you can do this by hand, or you can sketch a normal distribution curve, and I strongly recommend that. That might help you in terms of assessing the percentage of data using a normal distribution curve uh, fall between certain values. Okay? Here's an example of it. The mean incubation time for of a fertilized chick chicken eggs kept at a certain temperature is 21 days. Incubation times are normally distributed with a standard deviation of one day. According to the empirical rule, approximately 95% of incubations will have times between which two values. So what you can do is that you can take the mean, which is 21, plus or minus, plus or minus uh, the number of standard deviations. So it's two standard deviations away from the mean. So we, so approximately 95%. So we want two standard deviations. So we want two standard deviations away, times the standard deviation, which is one. And so when we when we do the mathematics here. We get the lower bound and the upper bound, which is 19 and 23. So 95% of incubations will have times between 19 and 23. Now what you could do is that you can, can sketch a normal distribution. So if the mean is 21 and the standard deviation is 1, we would put 21 in the middle. And so one standard deviation away from the mean would be 20 and 22. Okay? Uh, 19 and 23 would be two standard deviations away from the mean. In 18, 20, 24 would be three standard deviations away from the mean. And so you can put a little bracket here that says that 68% would be contained within 20 and 22. 95% uh, of the data would be contained within 19 and 23. And then 99.7% of the data would fall between 18 and 24. So I'd recommend sketching when you're dealing with the 68, 99.7 rule, sketching the normal distribution curve. And so putting in all these different numbers here uh, at the mean, one standard deviation away from the mean, two standard deviations, and three standard deviations away from the mean. Okay? So then here's another example. The Council of Graduate of Medical Education found that medical residents' mean number of hours worked in a week is 81.7. The number of hours worked per week is normally distributed with a standard deviation of 6.9 hours. Okay? So according to the empirical rule, approximately 95% of students will have work times between which two values? Okay? You can stop the video and go through this on your own. So what we could do is that we could take, so 95% of the data, we could take 81.7 plus or minus 2 times 6.9. And so if we do the mathematics here, we can say that 95% of the data fall between 67.9 and 95.5. Okay. What about 99.7% of the students? Well, instead of two standard deviations, what would it be instead? It would be three standard deviations away from and so if you did the mathematics here, we can get a lower bound and an upper bound of 61 and 102.4. So 99.7% of the students would fall between 61 and 102.4. So what per approximate percentage of data will fall between 74.8 and 88.6 hours? 
So think about this for a sec. How many standard deviations are these two numbers away from the mean of 81.7? Well, in this case, both 74 and 88.6 are one standard deviation from the mean. So 68% of the data will fall within those two points. Now what you can do is that you can do what I suggested um, earlier, which is sketch this out. So you put in the mean here, which is 81.7 in the middle, and then put in 74. Point, and so you add and subtract one standard deviation, which is 6.9. So you'd be one standard deviation away. So these two points contain 68% of the data. Then you can do the same thing at 95% where you would add and subtract another standard deviation away from the mean. So you would get 67.9 and 95.5. And then you can add and subtract one more standard deviation away from the mean to get 61 and 102. So I can ask this question, going back to the problem here, I can ask this question in two ways. I can ask about what percentage, 95% uh, uh, of the students will have work times between which two values. Or I can ask what percentage of data will fall between 74.8 and 88.6. So I can ask that this question two different ways. And if you draw this up here, you can, you can address both, either one of those two questions. Okay? So now the next thing is let's talk about is a z-score. So a z-score, suppose a variable x is normally distributed with a mean of mu and a standard deviation sigma. And the random variable z is normally distributed with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. The z-score is calculated as follows. So it's z is equal to x, which is our variable, minus the mean, which is mu, divided by sigma, which is our standard deviation. So basically, the z-score represents the number of standard deviation of value x is away from the mean. Okay? So there are three uses for the z-score. First of all, we, de we determine the values that may be extreme. That's one way. That's one use. The second use is we compare values from two different types of normal distributions. Okay? And then finally, we're capable of using normal probabilities to calculate the probabilities of a specific event. Okay? And we'll go through each of these uses of the z-score. So first of all, determining extreme values. So the mean incubation time, going back to our previous problem, fertilized chicken eggs are kept at a certain temperature is 21 days. The incubation times are normally distributed with the standard deviation of one day. What is the z-score of an incubation time for 20 and a half days? Would that be considered extreme? How about 25 days? So if we take 20 and a half, which is this value here, minus the mean, which is 21, divided by the standard deviation, which is one day, our z-score would be negative 0.5. If we look at the bell curve on the bottom right here, negative 0.5 would lie somewhere right here. Compare that to the mean, that's not a very extreme value. Okay? However, if we take 25 days, we take 20, we get the z-score for that, take 25 minus the mean, which is 21, divided by the standard deviation, which is 1, we get a z-score of 4. 4 is way over here on the right side, and that appears to be an extreme or an unusual value. Okay. Now let's go to the next problem. Now the Council for Graduate Medical Education found that the medical residents' mean number of hours worked in a week is 81.7. The number of hours worked per week is normally distributed with a standard deviation of 6.9 hours. What is the z-score of the study times in a week of 84 hours? Would that be considered extreme? How about 110 hours? So stop the video and work these problems and, and, and we'll go through the answers. Okay, so Here's the answer to the first problem, so, or both problems. If we take the first one, 84 minus the mean, divided by the standard deviation, we get a z-score of 0.33. That's right over here just above zero, so that doesn't appear to be extreme. However, if we get a z-score of 100, if we take x, which is 110, get the z-score for that, where we subtract the mean, divided by the standard deviation, we get a z-score of 4.10. And that definitely, since it's over here on the far right, that's definitely extreme. So it can be extreme. Usually the rule of thumb is, is if anything is beyond the 2 on the right side or beyond negative 2 on the left side would be considered extreme or unusual. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to, uh, now I'm going to, uh, the next video I'm going to compare um, scores from different distributions.